And as you know, this is the fourth Sunday of the middle, and which is almost, we don't have like an occasion. So as you know, almost every time we've been given sermons. So maybe today I will recite a beautiful story. Actually, it's one of my favorite. It's about the Holy Bible, or reading the Bible. And it shows how much we can benefit out of reading the Bible. So the story begins, a millionaire invited lawyers, businessmen, and politicians to his castle to discuss the death of, to discuss, you know, the death penalty, or sometimes they call, you know, death sentence or death penalty. So that night, a young lawyer stood defending abolishment or remove, he wants to remove the death penalty because it's very, like, so harsh. That's how he feels. Saying, if evil people don't care about innocent lives, should we act like them? He doesn't like the penalty, the death penalty. So he's saying, isn't it enough to keep the murder in a prison for a lifetime, for example? So, by the way, no matter how just, or how, how, how justice is being served on earth, we still do commit mistakes, which is, it happens. We know that. So, and if we do commit a mistake and find out later, what can we do after that? How can we fix it? They can't fix it. So that's why he was defending, you know, the death penalty. So the millionaire that night, who is, you know, supporting the death penalty, he said to them, if we remove it, the murderers will have no mercy on the innocent lives. And uh, beside that, the society will lose its power. The society and the government will lose its power. If you think about it, a lifetime of prison, or prison, you know, lifetime, you know, a prison, it's actually more brutal, brutal than a death penalty. Why? Why? Because he thinks, you know, that if he is he almost like dying every day in that prison. So the attorney actually at that moment he got so angry of him and he said that the death penalty should be removed. As long should be removed despite how much you know that will cost the society as long as not a single innocent person gets executed unintentionally. Which is again, it's a good you know, point. What he's trying to say, doesn't matter you know, how much you know, each a prisoner you know, will cost the society, but as long as we don't commit a mis mistake or you know, commit a murder against on any innocent you know, person. So the millionaire at that point again, he was disappointed and said, I am willing to give up all my wealth in front of everybody. Okay? If you are, he said, you know, that to the lawyer, if you are willing to spend in a prison only 15 years, not a lifetime, not a lifetime, but 15 years only. And unfortunately, the situation is getting very bad. And the attorney answered, 
I accept the challenge to spend 15 years in prison. So the millionaire thought, he said to him, bring a piece of paper and let's write down the conditions of the contract. And he did actually, and the Lord start, start you know, writing down the contract. Number one, the millionaire saying, I am willing to give up my wealth, which is worth about 10 million. 10 million back then was, of course, much, much more than today, including the castle for Mr. So-and-so, if he accepts a solitary prison for 15 years in my garden. That's term number one. Number two, the first party will spend on the second party during the 15 years. And the third one, cannot see anybody or leave the present for any reason. Both of them signed the paper or the contract in front of everybody. It was a very sad situation up to this moment. So now let's move on to the second part, which is first day in a prison. Of course, first day in a prison, many negative thoughts, you know, attack the lawyer. Is my decision, is crazy? After 15 years, am I going to find a wife who loves me, not my wealth? And on and on and on. So at the end, he got so tired and he decided, he said, I'm going to continue no matter what. So the first two years, my beloved passed and he felt lonely. It's not easy. You can't see nobody, you can't talk to anybody. He was lonely and he asked a millionaire for the music instruments with a teacher to train him, you know, every day. He got them. After two years, he started again to get bored. Very lonely and bored. And the musical instruments, because the musical instruments don't talk to him or share his feeling. So that's why he felt so lonely because neither did a, a human being. So this, in the six years, he asked the, the million to bring him a, a different books of different religions. And he spent the whole year and read different religion you know, books. Now in the beginning of the seven year, are we counting the years? Okay, so we have nine years left in the prison. So on the seventh year, finally he decided, or actually he missed reading the Bible. Now we are coming, coming to the real story. He started reading the Word of God, this time completely differently. In a way, he was crying out to God, not reading at the same time, at the same time, he was crying out to God, asking Him to reveal Himself, God to, you know, to reveal Himself to the prisoner through His Word. And that's actually, he spent the whole year doing that. In the beginning of the eighth year, again, the guard asked him if he needed anything. He said, no, thank you. I haven't finished reading the Bible yet. If we think about it, in one year he read at least three different religion, you know, books. And now, but the Bible, he hasn't finished it yet. Why? Because the lawyer started feeling the presence of God feeling, filling his room. It's not just reading the Bible. Like I said, he started feeling the presence of God filling his room and the prison 
became a joyous heaven to him. Just because reading the Bible. And that's what's happening to the monks when they go to monasteries. Not just to go, to go away from the world. Or they aren't, you know, responsible people. No, not at all. But the more you read the Bible, in a spiritual way, of course you can benefit a lot. So my beloved, another couple years passed and he didn't ask for anything again. And the millionaire was really anxious. So he asked the guard, what is happening to this person? How come he's not asking for anything anymore? The guard replied, he isn't requesting anything or looking at your mansion as used to and barely eating bread or food. But always seems happy and his heart is full of joy or peace and I think he is the happiest person on the face of earth. What a story. You may be starting, you know, very sad and in that, you know, very sad way. But now we see it turn to, to the opposite way, to much better way. Now, my beloved, at the end, let's get to the critical moments. One month left until the end of the contract end, and one day, during a snowstorm in the middle of the dark night, the millionaire decided to go and finish the lawyer's life. Because he said, that's it, I'm losing everything. I have only one month left, I must do something. And finally, actually, he got in to that prison or room, found the lawyer's head on the dining room, falling asleep. So the millionaire was about to stab him. Suddenly he stopped. Why? Because he saw a piece of paper on that table that says, Declaration of Disclaimer, which means the lawyer, he doesn't want a single penny anymore. He gave up everything. That's why the story, Tyler, is the millionaires, I'm sorry, the millions collapsed. Yes, at this moment, the millions really collapsed. Or you can say, here is the feeling that the more we get closer to the Lord, the more we give up the worldly things. And that's what happened to the lawyer. So the millionaire, as he read the paper, and the knife fell off of his hand. And at that moment, the lawyer woke up, and both of them hugged each other, loved each other, and actually lived actually in the same mansion, reading the Bible over and over, and shared a divine love and bought so many Bibles and distributed to the whole city. What a beautiful story. Why did I mention this story, my beloved? Again, we come into a time, it's a very difficult time, whether we know it or not. Because I see a lot of people, they don't know nothing. They don't want to know nothing. I don't know why. The time is getting bad, and we must know or read the Bible this way. We can come closer to the truth, which is the Lord Jesus. And as you know, there is nothing can set us free but the truth, which is the Lord Jesus. Because many people, they don't know the truth. They don't want to know. So we need to know the truth, my beloved. 
this way to continue going on a straight path toward the Lord Jesus. The Lord Jesus brought us for this reason, to know him, to know the truth, and spend eternal life with him. Please go back reading the Bible. Do not come up, come up, you know, with any excuse because none of the excuses, you know, at the end of the day will help us. We can't say, Lord, I was busy, I went to this place. I visited so and so, I did this, I that. I'll... There is no excuse, excuses at that time. All of us, if we are serious about something, we will do it no matter what. So this is the, the point, if we love, the Lord Jesus, we will come up with time no matter what. Even if I have to go less or sleep less one hour, but at least I will go open my Bible to inflame the Holy Spirit within me to know the Lord Jesus, the truth, and follow the truth. Amen. God bless you.